Sometimes I wonder if the very things I love about a thrift store are things that other people don't like, but I love walking in and smelling that musty smell sometimes of books or of old record albums. It, it just mesmerizes me. And I can be having the worst day and I can walk into a thrift store and just be transported into some other thrift land that just makes me so happy. What is that? My cousin Dennis recorded this. <laughs> I don't think he'd appreciate your casual nature he of this. might be album. buying it. How? What do you think that is? I believe it's a muffin cover. <laughs> How could it be a muffin cover? Because it, it <laughs> will fit right under there and the steam from the muffin will heat up the inside and keep your muffin warm. <laughs> Have you ever been entertaining and served somebody a muffin and they said, by the way, do you have a muffin warmer? Twice. Whenever I'm in a place like this, I always wonder what stories these objects could tell. They had this whole amazing life in someone's home. that something to churn butter? No, it's a fire extinguisher. Now, how could that possibly be a fire extinguisher? Because there's a hose that comes out where that black is and then you pump the handle and it would spray water. These are beautiful. How about if I bought you this set of plates? Would you use them? Go right out in the garage. Now you'd always make me that chicken that was soaked in French dressing and I told him for 20 years that I hated it and every time he'd cook it he'd say you're gonna grow to like it. No, I'm not. <laughs> hey everybody, thank you so much for coming back and seeing me and Desi. I hope you had a great week. I had such a fun week. My old friend Hal, my friend Hal that I have known since I was 22 years old, he came up on Valentine's Day and we had such a good time. We went to so many thrift stores and we went out for a lovely dinner at my son's restaurant. We went in the middle of downtown at midnight just to film and it was so much fun. There wasn't anybody down there except one little police officer that wanted to know what we were up to. <laughs> anyway, it was so much fun and I filmed it and well, there's something about having an old friend that you love and that you trust and we have so many shared experiences. We have so many stories. We've loved the same people. We've lost the same people. It, so it was a real boost for me to be able to spend 24 hours with my friend Hal. You ask me every single week tips about thrifting because I've been thrifting for about 45 years. That's a long time. And the items that I have in my home, I love them so much. But truth be told, there's no way I could have afforded the things that I own if I had to pay full price for them. When I was 21, that's about when I started thrifting and I didn't know anything about nothing. I just would go in there and my mindset was, well, I'm poor, but I just cashed my paycheck and I got 20 bucks extra. And what I wanna do is I wanna buy a few things for my home to remind me of why I work. I, I wanted to have something to show for my money. I mean, you pay taxes and you buy groceries and you pay your electric bill. And then you look back and wonder, where'd the money go for my job? So psychologically, I bought little trinkets for my home that would remind me why I work so hard. I know it's silly, it sounds ridiculous, but that was how it started for me. Just a little something to give me a little boost when I got up in the morning and went to work. Chocolate for a woman's soul. What do you 
think a man's soul would want him? Uh, a cold beer and salted in the shell peanuts. I would go off to the thrift store. I would see these beautiful objects and I didn't know their history. I didn't know what they were worth. So I vowed right then and there, I'm going to educate myself. So I bought myself some books on antiques. I bought myself books on pottery, on dishes, on glassware. And that was how it started. And I thought, if I'm armed with this information about the history of these objects and what they were worth, then when I plunked down my dollars, I knew what I was buying and I, I had the history of it so I could appreciate it even more. There is nothing more fun to me than going on a road trip and hitting a whole bunch of thrift stores throughout the state and doing that with another friend or another person that just loves thrifting. It doesn't get any better than that. But if you are not a person that likes to do that and you like to stay in your area, and I, I kind of like to do that too, you hit the same thrift stores because you know the neighborhood surrounding that thrift store, well, you know the demographic of that neighborhood. And when you find a thrift store that's in a neighborhood that is older, that's the one to go to. Because if the neighborhood is older, then they have a tendency to donate things that are older, thus more valuable, more unique. Everything that you're looking for, you can find within thrift stores that are in neighborhoods that are older. Not so much richer, just older. So that's what I have always scouted out. Where are the stores in the oldest neighborhoods? And that, that holds true with garage sales and estate sales. If there's a house that's 100 years old and they're having an estate sale, oh yeah, I'm there with the coffee, with the donuts, with a little bit of cash. <laughs> That's a beautiful stove. What year do you think it is? I don't know. I'm thinking it's from the early 50s. But this is stuff you don't find anymore where they put patterns on the door handles. Buttorf. Enterprise. Phillips and Buttorf Manufacturing. Oh, I think, wasn't that your cousin? Your cousin Buttorf? I think I remember that. He, he made ovens and then he recorded albums, right? Well, that was Dennis's brother-in-law. What about the woman who opened this up and put the dinner in to warm up for her husband? What was her story? What was their story? Oh, I wish, I so wish this stove could talk. I have been thrifting for 44 years. Well, that could be kind of dangerous, right? I mean, you just accumulate so many things that you can hardly walk through your house. So what I have adopted is this thing called intentional thrifting. In other words, I don't go out anymore and just say, ooh, that's valuable, I'll buy that. Ooh, I like that, I'll buy that. I can't do that anymore. Now, I'm in a home now, a home that I love. And it has a very large basement, dry, clean, lovely. I could put shelves up and tables everywhere and I could load up my basement with all my thrift store treasures, but I refuse to do that. I will never do that. What I do is intentional thrifting. I, I figure out now what is it that I need? Or let's say I'm doing a room makeover. I know exactly the items I'm looking for. And I can't go down to Home Goods and buy these things that I want or that I need. I want things with deeper meaning. I want things that are of true value, crafted in such a way where they can't even do it anymore. So that's why it's so important for me to do intentional thrifting. So when I was redoing my bedroom, I knew that I wanted a lamp, a certain type of lamp. 
that would give such warmth and ambience. I think so important that when we go out to the thrift store, we have something in mind. Now, of course, you're going to run into things like, oh my gosh, that lamp. Okay, I didn't really need that lamp for my kitchen, but I want it. Or that piece of art. Oh my gosh, I wasn't here for a piece of art, but I have to have that. That's always going to happen when you're thrifting. But what I used to do is I would go through and I'd say, oh, that dog figurine is so cute. And oh, that plaque is so cute. I can't do that anymore. Or I would just junk up my house. I cannot do that. There is no way you can be depressed if you're listening to polka music. There isn't. Polka music is so upbeat. It is. And let me tell you, this is Stan Wallowick yeah. and the polka chips. Oh, what yeah, a clever look at him. man. You think they would have a hose for butter? Oh, yeah. So when you churn it, you could just stand under there and shoot butter in your mouth? Well, once you put the milk in, you have to have a way to get the milk out. So there'd have to be a yeah, hose. You, but you're churning the, the cream to make butter. You okay. don't want it to come out. Yeah, but what if you change your mind? This is your basic blue blazer. All right. Merry men, what does that mean? Do, should I know this? Who wears a know. merry men suit? If it fits, I'll try man. it on for you. I can get one arm in, that's <laughs> it. Are you merry though? Yes. What is that, Hill? $75. $75 for a butter churner? More than a decade ago, I had a couple bucks in my account and I had to rebuild my life. And one of the ways that I rebuilt my life is I would go to the thrift store and I would pick out things and I would sell them on eBay. And that was profitable and it got more and more profitable. And when I was married and my husband and I had, you know, quite a bit of money, I was able to have a pretty large hall pottery collection. And what I did was when I needed the money, I sold off all my hall pottery one by one. And I realized I found the one piece of hall I own now I found at the thrift store. And even if I find another one, I don't buy it. And why is that? Because it, it brings back a lot of bad memories. Okay, not bad memories, sad memories. And I'm grateful to Hall Pottery. I'm grateful for the knowledge that I had that I knew what the pottery was worth and I sold it on eBay and it helped put food on my table when I didn't have any other means to do that. So I'm grateful for that. But my point is buy what you love, buy what you need. And, you know, you make a choice in your mind. Am I buying for myself in my home or am I buying this to resell it or a little bit of both? For me, it's always maybe a little bit of both. Right now at this stage in my life, I pretty much buy for me and, you know, I take you with me all the time. So I try to show you what I buy, why I buy it and where I put it. But my taste has changed over the years. I used to like a lot of beautiful art pottery. Let me show you. You know, the beautiful uh, pieces of Roseville that you can get and Weller pottery. And I used to just love that. But for some reason now, I just love very clean arts and crafts things. You know, just um, something like this. This is an arts and crafts uh, piece of pottery. It's plain, it's beautiful. It's, it's so well crafted. I don't even understand how they make something like that. I love, um, this is a, a very old uh, Ohio Roseville milk pot. I love that. This sits on a table and it's just so stately with so much class. And I can't explain why do I love these things that they're just, they have so much history. They're 
they're not pretty flowers. They're not, you know, lovely paint jobs. They're just plain and with so much dignity. So it makes me happy when I walk into a room. If I feel like a year from now, I've had it with arts and crafts pottery. I want to replace it all with glass, bleak glass. Well, I can do that because I don't have a lot of money invested in anything in my home. So I can change my mind without guilt. I can also take some of these beautiful objects and I can gift them. Christmas time, birthdays. It's like I live in my own little gift shop. The memories that I have of last Christmas are so dear. And I found a beautiful piece of McCoy pottery and my friend in Grand Rapids, Ellen collects McCoy pottery. And it was so wonderful to be able to gift her this beautiful piece of pottery. Not something I bought at Home Goods or Hobby Lobby, something real from 1941 that was just so beautiful. We've had fun thrifting together for almost 10 years. But for those that, that don't know, go out, buy what you love. Don't be intimidated that, oh, that's not good taste. Who cares? If you want to put ceramic chickens on your wall, put the chickens on your wall and be damned what anybody else says. Life is, is way too short to have other people dictate what is good taste, what is proper, what is right. And some woman hits a golf ball and hits you on the arm and almost breaks your arm. Yeah, cry me a river. I hit you with a golf ball 40 years ago. You're still whining about it. I sure am. <laughs> I think they'll fit. No, what well, is but that? I, I have to wear them up around my chest <laughs> so they'll be the right length. Is that long underwear? Yes. Oh my gosh. And let me tell you, they were made right in Rockford, Michigan. Well, of course they were. When, what do you call those, Hal? I think you call those boxer shorts. Really? They're, they're like underwear. Well, they're, they're, they're quite large. Yes, they are. What size are those? Um, teeny. <laughs> Who would have thought that they would have multiple copies of Barbara Michaels? They have all her books. Who's Barbara Michaels? I have no idea, but they have all her books. <laughs> I get asked all the time, what are some of your very favorite items over the years that you have thrifted and why? And I want to take you around and I want to show you four or five of them. Some are valuable and some aren't, but they run so deep and I have had these items with me quite a while. And a few of them, you were with me when, when I found them. So I, I just want to show you where they are in my home. There is a painting by Dee Morgan, and I have her painting in my kitchen. Now, it doesn't go with my kitchen decor. I, I want everything beach or, or, you know, kind of pop culture in there, so it doesn't go in there. But it's there because in the morning when I grab my first cup of coffee, I see what Dee Morgan has painted, and I see what she has written, and I know why she wrote it. And I know why I need to read it every single morning to remind myself, to forgive myself, to understand that I have made mistakes, but that I try every day to be better, to correct the things that I can correct, and to let go of some of the things I just don't have control of. Before I found a Dee Morgan painting at the thrift store, I had never heard of this woman who painted in Georgia. I didn't know what a genius she is. I didn't know that she had lost her son. I didn't know that painting was a way for her to cope with such grief. And when I see this painting, 
And it's this beautiful home, but in front of the home are all these amazing young trees. Even though the home is old, the trees are young. And she writes about the dishes are done, the papers are read, the children are, are snuggled up in their bed. And she's talking about a life that perhaps she used to have. Maybe she's depicting heaven. But whatever it is, the last line of what she writes on her painting is, I'm grateful for everything that I have. And that is what I need to be reminded of every single day. I always talk about, I have this little phrase that I use when I feel overwhelmed or when I feel that life has treated me unfairly. And I always say to myself, it could have been worse. And indeed, it could have been worse. And that helps me. It helps me put things into perspective. There is always hope. There is always love. And there is always forgiveness. And every single morning when I see Miss Morgan's painting, I know that in my heart. And I am reminded to live it. Dishes done, papers read, children snuggled into bed, hours past the setting sun. I count my blessings one by one. Hey everybody, thank you so much for hanging out with us today. I hope you liked the video and I wanted to thank you so much for your amazing comments on the video last week about well, how we feel when we love someone that perhaps doesn't love us back. Your comments, well, you just blew me away as usual. But tonight, if you get a chance, just down in the comments, could you let us know how you're doing? Well, please have yourself a wonderful, happy, brand new week. And when you're done with your week, come back and see me and Desi, okay? All right, it's a deal. We'll be here. I'm going to ask Desi if he wants to sing, and we'll see what happens. <laughs> You'll never know, dear, how much I love you. Please don't take my son. Shine on away. Oh my goodness. Did you ever see the movie Casino? Yep. Oh boy, that'll teach you to stay away from the shovel. We, the court system in England, find him guilty of treason. Churn butter? No, a fire extinguisher. Have you ever been to Jamaica? 